inflammation, cognitive decline, lung issues, heart problems, just some of the most serious conditions tied to poor circulation and immune health. Often treatments rely on harsh anti-inflammatories that are not feasible for everyone. Can we approach this in a new way? Well, with the discovery of VIP, many researchers in neurology and immunology are thinking so. This powerful, naturally occurring peptide activates key receptors to relax muscles, enhance circulation, and reduce inflammatory responses. Let's take a deep dive into VIP, where I share all my research and discoveries on this peptide, where we'll turn curiosity into mastery and mastery into breakthrough results. So before I begin, I must start off with a disclaimer that I'm not a doctor or a licensed medical professional. For any questions related to your health, please seek out a licensed professional and do not consult this video. This video is purely for educational and entertainment reasons. By watching this video, you agree to the terms. Now let's get straight into the video. So what is VIP? VIP stands for vasoactive intestinal peptide and large amounts of it are found naturally in the intestines, the pancreas, and the brain, but it's also found in other parts of the body. And VIP influences movement across the body when it comes to just general circulation of blood, lymph, additionally it helps influence energy production. As well, there's research of VIP helping reduce inflammation in different parts of the body and as well as protecting neurons in the brain. So how does VIP work? Well, it works by binding to a couple different receptors, VPAC1, VPAC2, and PAC1 receptors. And these receptors are found throughout the body. And when activated, these receptors relax blood vessels, smooth muscle, allowing for increase in blood flow and movement. And additionally, it modulates the immune system to help reduce inflammation and overall have a better immune response. And because VIP receptors help dilate or open blood vessels and relax smooth muscles, this helps lower blood pressure, improves oxygen delivery throughout the body because blood delivers oxygen, and additionally helps protect the blood brain barrier. And because things are being opened and relaxed, the blood vessels are dilated, the smooth muscles are relaxed, we're getting more circulation. This enhances multiple parts of the body from helping with lymphatic movement, which helps many parts of the body, to help with blood flow such as erectile dysfunction, to help and relax the lungs to when it comes to COPD or asthma, also to sending blood flow throughout the brain. All these parts of the body, your lymphatic system, your sexual system, your lungs, a big part of it requires on good blood flow and allowing things to be open and relaxed, which VIP helps with this. So what are the research benefits of VIP? It helps support healthy blood flow and it regulates blood pressure. It reduces organ inflammation and protects tissue. It can support different lung issues such as COPD and asthma because it does relax the smooth muscles allowing for better breathing and better flow. It supports brain health because it protects the blood brain barrier and it enhances circulation in the lymphatic system, the sexual system and the respiratory system, which those have a multitude of benefits. Now let's go into the cautions and counterindications. From my research, the most common cautions I've seen have been nausea, headache, changes in blood pr pressure, feeling dizzy. And this all happens because VIP opens up things allowing for movement, which that can change a shift in the entire body, which can be a good thing, but also, you know, it can be shocking for some individuals. Also, there's caution in any individual taking some kind of blood pressure medication or immune medication because VIP does interact with those parts of the body. And then when it comes to counterindications from my research, I've seen pregnant individuals and or individuals that have uncontrolled blood pressure because VIP affects the blood pressure. Now let's go into dosing and cycling. And one thing I'll note about this peptide, it's dose and cycle a little bit differently than most peptides. So if dosing from my research, I've seen anywhere from 100 to 500 micrograms per dose. But for cycling, for my research, is an on-need basis because this peptide has a very short half-life, two minutes. So pretty much the goal is that whenever the individual needs an increase in blood flow, movement, the peptide is used. So it's used as an on-need basis. The goal is not to become dependent on this compound. This is a very similar example I can see is like in asthma. When people use inhalers, sometimes people become dependent on it. Inhaler is used as just a last, you know, if you really need to use it, the main goal is to fix the root cause. And this is also one thing you'll see too, is that 
this peptide has benefits, but it's a little bit less healing of a peptide, more for a symptom kind of helping peptide. And if needed to use long-term, I've seen four to eight weeks on and two to four weeks off. So in summary, 100 to 500 micrograms per dose use and as, as need basis, really depending on the goal and the intention and pretty much when we need an increase in blood flow and muscle relaxation. And it can be used multiple times a day. I've seen that in research, again, depends on the goal and the individual. And last thing, it's important not to get dependent on this, but to use it as a support mechanism. And now I'll briefly touch on different administration forms of VIP, because as the market's changing, I'm seeing peptides in patches, pills, nasals, nebulizing, it's, it's insane. And I think it's important to be open to this. And I wanna show the most common ways of so far of VIP. So first I've seen injecting, and that seems to be more towards just full body systemic. And I've seen more on the lower dosing, 100 to 300 micrograms, because it tends to be a higher absorption rate for injecting. And then nasal, I've seen normal dosing, 100 to 500 micrograms, and that seems to target more of the brain because VIP does help with the brain, but also does have a little faster acting effect because it can go straight into the blood-brain barrier. And lastly, I've seen nebulizing because this peptide does help a lot with relaxing the lungs. So this can be individuals focusing on more lung issues, nebulizing can be very beneficial. So it's very interesting to see how peptides are being used in different ways. Now I wanna to touch on other peptides to stack with VIP. And it largely depends on the goal because VIP can have many uses of why an individual wants to research with VIP. But when it comes to healing, because VIP can help with healing, my go-to peptides for that would be BPC, TP500, GHKCU, KPV. Altogether, they're called the CLO combo, but individual with VIP could be very powerful or altogether. This would be more focused if I wanted to focus on healing. Next common thing I see with VIP is working on the lungs. And my go-to peptides to add to the lungs would be LL37 and as well bronchogen. So LL37 is more of an immune peptide, but it does help a lot with the lungs. And bronchogen is actually a bioregulator that helps target lung tissue. So I think together it could be very powerful, especially because VIP does more superficial stuff. And then the LL37 and bronchogen does more like the deep healing. And then moving on more towards sex and fertility, because VIP does help with ED because it helps help with blood flow, but I would add in PT1 for one, kiss peptin tint, and oxytocin. Those can help in different ways if either the goal is sexual health or fertility. And lastly, talking about some brain peptides because VIP does help with the brain in numerous ways, but I would add in CMAX or Selenc. So as you can see, it really depends on the researcher's goal and what category they wanna focus on. And based off that, that will determine the peptides to add to the entire protocol. So now let's go to supplements I would take with VIP. And the overall goal of VIP is that it moves things, it opens things up and it moves things in the body, which is very important for many things. So how can we complement that? The first thing is beet powder. And at first I was gonna put arginine or the amino acid arginine, which helps create more nitric oxide, which is important for blood flow. But honestly, I prefer beets powder, just organic beet powder, no sugar, nothing, as it has so many benefits to help with blood flow and has more of a holistic effect, you know, with so many antioxidants. And personally, I feel more and I benefit more from taking beet powder over just arginine. Next would be some kind of animal organ part, depending on the goal. I'm a big fan of organs. So for example, if I wanted to focus on my fertility, I would add in animal testicle. If I wanted to focus on my lungs, I would add it in animal lung. I do think it's beneficial, especially long-term. Next would be some kind of functional protein, so bone broth protein or collagen protein, the building blocks of our body, and I believe these proteins would be the most functional and easy to digest. Next supplement would be creatine. I think creatine has so many benefits from helping build muscle with more energy to helping protect the brain. Overall, a great supplement. And the last two supplements I would look into would be NAD or glutathione. I overall think those are just some great supplements for overall base support and can really support any protocol. Now let's go into the lifestyle tools I would add. First, starting off with some of the most important and that is sun and sleep. Those two things can do wonders for your health. Next would be a raw animal-based diet. I think that's one of the best ways to eat. So focusing on like raw milk, raw honey, you know, some fresh fruit, some good meats. Those can be very, very healing. Next would be corrective training, especially rebounding. I'm a huge fan of rebounding. It's one of the most gentle and most effective ways to bring movement to your body. So combining this with VIP could be very, very powerful. And also rebounding is gonna fix more the root cause of lack of movement inside the body. Next would be some kind of body work. I'm thinking acupuncture, massage, chiropractic. Those things can do wonders at helping open up the body. And again, fixing the root cause 
of why there is lack of movement within the body. Because VIP more fixes the symptoms of bad blood flow, not the root cause, which is kind of rare because a lot of peptides actually focus more on the root cause, but this peptide is more of a symptom focusing peptide. Next would be hot and cold therapy. It can be infrared sauna to a cold bath. Just different ways of having contrast because contrast is amazing in different ways for helping the blood flow, your brain has tons and tons of benefits. Next would be HBOT or some kind of oxygen therapy as that can be very healing in many ways. And lastly, this is especially focused if the goal is sexual health because that's a big reason why VIP is used or one of the goals. This is for men, shockwave therapy for the penis as well as a penis pump. Those are very powerful, especially used in conjunction with lifestyle tools and supplements can be very powerful for male sexual health. So what are the pros of VIP? The first pro is that it's fast acting and it has more of a holistic effect when it comes to relaxing blood vessels, relaxing smooth muscles, because not only it does that, but it also helps protect the brain. Another pro is that it can be used in different forms from injecting to nasal to nebulizing, which I think that is pretty cool. What are the cons of VIP? Is that it's very short acting, so it, it only lasts a couple of minutes. Another con is that this peptide has some healing benefit, but it, it focuses more on symptoms, which a lot of peptides actually do help with the root cause and really heal the body, where this peptide doesn't really fall into a more healing peptide, for example, like BPC or KPV. So what is my overall opinion of VIP? I think VIP is great. I like how it works. I like how it's fast acting. I've actually paired it up myself with PT one for one VIP and oxytocin. So there's many unique ways to use VIP in my opinion, but a biggest drawback of it is that it's not that powerful. When I say powerful, for example, like BPC-157. It's a very powerful peptide because it does many different things and it really heals the body. Where VIP has a little bit of that, but it's not much of a healing peptide, it's more of a symptom-focused peptide. So I think VIP has its time and place, but when it comes to overall value and power, it's not that great because first, it's a little bit more expensive. You're not getting that much a true healing benefit from it, where if I really wanna get the most bang on my buck, I would focus on peptides that really heal and focus more on the root cause of, you know, the entire goal of using peptides. But there's still a lot more research to do about this peptide. But anyways, those are my thoughts over VIP. If you want to support my channel and really learn more about peptides and master peptides, Check out my books on Amazon, Peptides Made Simple. I have two books out there that can really help your research. And also it's a way to support my channel or check out Peptide Academy VIP. It's my school group that I built for people who really want the more elite and really VIP group on peptides. But thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and stick around for future videos.